Welcome back to another video. We're doing another studio tour. Uh, behind me you see the control room of Next Movement Studio. Got an SSL, ATC monitors, a certain Sony mic as well, I believe. Uh, there's more stuff upstairs. There's a bunch of outboard gear. It's a really cool space. So um, let's have a look. All right, we're in the control room. Uh, where are we? Who are you? Welcome. Uh, my name is Chris, Chris Warger. Uh, I'm the owner of the studio. Nice. Uh, we started building this place, I think, three years ago, after I finished uh, Ebriot Institute in Amsterdam. Nice. And there I learned to work with like analog gear and stuff. Uh, I came from a totally different background, so there was a lot to learn. Nice. And then I got infected with like the analog virus over yeah. there. Uh, and after finishing uh, Every Road Institute, I was back with my laptop again and Universal Audio plugins, which is cool. Yeah. But I longed for the days of working in like a it wasn't the same. studio. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. yeah, yeah also, yeah. the energy was different. Um, yeah. So basically, um, we invested in like a lot of stuff that we uh, had the privilege to work uh, there with. Um, yeah. And then we started building the studio. We got some blueprints nice. from Mark One. Uh, how to build the studio and then we started uh, building and like fine-tuning nice. and uh, this is the result it looks amazing yeah it's got a great vibe Thanks. I mean I feel right at home with the SSL there and uh, lots of great outboard gear that you can not see right now but <laughs> trust me it's great gear there's a great mic behind you I know mm -hmm. you have many more as well it's amazing so What's this spot? Did you already have it? Is yeah, it, it, it used history? to be like a, a listening room for a hi-fi uh, hi import company, right. uh, which uh, we helped start like a couple of years ago with the family. And then this place got too small for them and I was looking for a studio space. Right. So it already had some acoustic treatment and like the furnishing for a big part was already there. Right. So we had to add like an extra wall for isolation some small minor adjustments and uh, some room EQing. And then basically it was good to go. So uh, that saved us a lot of investment yeah. in, in acoustics. Now it's fine tuning. Yeah, I think like they're, they're also, playing. yeah, I mean, um, there's so, always something to wish for, right? Like that's life. Well, that's but, a uh, good thing. That's a good thing yeah. that you've got all of this stuff and that you, you still have something to wish for. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody's got something to wish right? for, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. If you're, if you're not there anymore that you go like, I have everything I could want, then. Yeah. I think there's always room to grow, right? Yeah. So, so there should be. There should be. And this, this is all, I mean, this is nice, but eventually it's the people that ma that make the magic right right yeah so the artists and the producers and yeah. the engineers they have to feel comfortable yeah and that's what we long to do here like yeah. uh, get like the infrastructure right, right. and like a lot of nice stuff like right. stuff people maybe dream of yeah but um at the end of the day like it's all just tools to make like magic happen right? exactly yeah and that's what you built this place for. Yeah, yeah. To have people yeah, so, work yeah. here and make the art, make Yeah, music. it's all about energy, right? right? Like in this digital days where everybody works with, with their computer, I yeah. think it's nice to have like a, like a safe harbor where you can right. just chill and uh, have good gear at your disposal and then from there on out get to work, right? Nice. Like that's the way yeah. I think music should be made. But uh, I mean, that's just my opinion. It's yeah, not mandatory. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And talking about good gear to make uh, yeah to make your records. I mean, you've got one of the greatest mics out there yeah. right behind you. Yeah. So so I'm like a vocalist at first. So yeah. for me, it was important that like the vocal chain was good, and uh, we got the chance to buy this this yeah this Sony C eight hundred G. Yeah. Um, and um, well, it's, it's nothing. Mic. Yeah, it's nothing short of amazing. Like. It saves us a lot of time in editing because right. it's already there. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, you could strive to get similar results with different mics, with EQing and stuff like that, but this is just, I, I can't really explain it. It's right, and it's like capture it right at the source. Yeah. And you really get it. And I think also for clients, there's a portion of the studio that's yeah. the commercial facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it's really like you need a certain 
if you have a mic of this caliber. Yeah, I, I think that could be a deal maker or a deal breaker, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be like, especially like big renowned artists who are yeah. used to work with a mic like this. Yeah. Um, it could be a deal or no deal situation, right. and uh, in this case, it would be a deal, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Um, because from experience, you have it's like uh, yeah. artists coming in from. Yeah, well, th this this particular mic uh, has Who been around. Who worked on it? I, I mean, uh, he didn't work here on it, but like Kendrick Lamar, uh, Lamar yeah, used crazy. this mic, which his is spit, like a, his spit is on this mic. Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've never cleaned it <laughs> since. Like, it's it, it's been blessed, right? like, just he, like his track. He wrote like he recorded. You not like us? They not like us? On yeah. This? <laughs> well, I don't think that's a different. I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a different face, <laughs> but. Um, I think like stuff that isn't on his latest album, but is yet to come out. He recorded it probably That's with crazy. this mic. Yeah. yeah. So this mic went from here to Belgium, and then back to here uh, within a day, yeah. um, just because he wanted to use this mic and they didn't have yeah. it there. Or uh, yeah, it's a really exclusive mic. Right. But, uh, yeah. So no, particular nice. artists who like value like the sound yeah. of of this mic. Yeah. I mean, they travel all around the world for yeah. this mic. Yeah. That's nice that you can also accommodate artists like that yeah like, yeah uh, yeah we could but like it's not the main goal but it's not it's a nice it's, to have yeah yeah, yeah. You and can um, go all the way yeah and it says something about like the caliber of the stuff that we yeah. can work here uh that we got to our disposal um to get to a good yeah. professional result yeah it's nice that you've got like stuff laid out to play already yeah you've yeah got, so we like, have a like, hammond over here yeah so we've got some hammond. records and samplers and everything I don't know how much is hooked up, but yeah, everything is hooked up. I, I just need to turn on the power, and then uh, oh, cool, then it, it works. So, so these are just like analog sources that we can use to sample. So, a C, still even a CD player because I love CDs. Yeah, like analog sampler, vinyl, and we can tap that right into like a, a sample. I, I don't have it set up yet, but we have like the. Uh, the Akai MPC Live 2. Nice. Like uh, the, the golden one. It would be nice if it was here, but. Yeah, so we can sample with that um, and like get like uh, the vintage sound that you want, right? Right. Like, yeah. Something that you cannot emulate. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That you, I think that's the most important thing about studios. Mm -hmm. They can just play around and, and just mess with stuff and stuff yeah. is ready and I mean you guitars you, there guitar amps like you want to be able to act on impulses right right and uh, I mean there's a story that you told me about a certain artist and then he wanted to play and you had to like rush to get everything yeah. plugged in so that's something that we can learn from as well yeah. right like everybody yeah. wants stuff at their disposal immediately exactly and they don't have time to wait for the idea because yeah. it might pass yeah the the artist he's talking about is uh, Reza from Wu Tang Clan, who came into the studio and he started playing the Juno, and then the Juno didn't make a sound, and it was the, I I hated myself that day. <laughs> so from that moment, I patched in everything I could at every session. So yeah. you live and you learn. Yeah. Even uh, the best. Yeah, yeah, of uh, course. Like, uh, still we're all here to things. learn, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but that's like, it's great that you have the space to yeah. actually play and, and do everything and, mm -hmm. and move around and it's not cramped and you've got a spot over here. Yeah. You've got a, a, a producer desk over here so yeah. people can sit there comfortably. Yeah, and we also have like uh, a polo which you can plug in so you don't have to get like do the hassle right. of like uh, connecting all the analog stuff and just you plug in your laptop. There's a polo over here. Yeah, yeah. Apollo and then you can just connect to that. Yeah, and then you have immediately uh, you can listen to whatever it is you're producing to. Yeah. So so that's nice. I think like in the workflow. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a main plus. Uh, yeah. And then over there, well, let's first address the elephant in the room. Yeah. The SSL. Yeah. Which makes me very happy. <laughs> uh, but it is interesting to see an SSL 4000E yeah. of this size mm -hmm. without a live room. Yeah, because I mean, not a lot of people mix on SSL or large format consoles mm -hmm. anymore. No, it's usually it's usually for a recording studio with a live room because you have to be 
really quick yeah uh and hands-on yeah and you have to get a lot of preamps mm -hmm. so why the decision to go for a large format console like this um because uh well we had like connects who had this large format console and it's hybrid so it has like all the analog uh, preferences but we can use it digitally as well so it has like midi controlled faders uh, and Basically because uh, the sound is nice and also it's nice to work with and we have a live room upstairs which we can connect so oh, nice. if we want to do drum recordings we can like uh, get the visuals on the screen there oh, sick. and then <coughs> and then yeah we can communicate and we have like a, a live room nice but usually we use it for mixing and it's, it's like a, a big nice to have right? yeah, yeah it's yeah. not really necessary uh, and also because Dr. Dre used to work on us, uh, <laughs> nice. and uh, we love hip hop over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I could tell yeah, by yeah. some of the artwork and uh, yeah, and stuff. But that's that's great that you decided to go for an SL. And I also think that it just adds to that studio vibe. Yeah, it's definitely. A, if there's a desk, a large format console, it's a proper studio. Every yeah. photo looks sick. Content you make looks like it's legit it's mm -hmm. proper it's like okay i'm in good hands yeah I, I that's think what that's what the right gear does yeah i mean like w w it's like cars right it gets you from a to b but you have levels in in, in like niceness it's and, like, and okay I'm, I'm talking to a car guy over here well i like it well a little bit but i mean i'm not like an expert in cars but uh, no no but it is like yeah, of yeah. course, every car gets you from A to B yeah, I mean, as long like, as it runs. Yeah, and every yeah. every mic gets gets you sound, right? Yeah, but, like, but it's like a, how it, yeah. nice is it going to be? And, uh, yeah, and, and this gets you there instantly, right? And and also, like, yeah. you can really push your mixes in the analog domain. Yeah. In the center section, like, yeah, that's... And it really gives you a certain sound that you can go for and, yeah. and a workflow and everything. And it's, yeah. It's not to say that like it's better than something else. Like it's also not no. to say that a Lamborghini. So, sometimes it, it even costs you more time, but it's fun. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like and, and, and also it's you for, it's for a certain purpose. Like you can yeah. also drive a Lambo or a Rolls Royce. Yeah. But you're driving them for a completely different purpose. Def definitely. And, but and they're and both the feeling is still different. amazing. Like, this is this is not a niche like. And this used to be like a, like a workhorse in the studio environment yeah. for mixing, right? Yeah. When when you didn't have like all the digital options, so exactly. So like a Neve would be nicer for recording purposes, but yeah. for mixing purposes, this is like quite neutral. And, yeah. And 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 we we have some uh, like some channel strips who are uh, yeah like some GEQs, and also like uh, some ads. Yeah, which are very nice, like to nice to have as well. Like you, you did something similar to what I have done with the Atlantis Studio SSL. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's four two nine twos, the the Pultec style EQs, the orange knobs, and then there's four pink knob G EQs in there. Yeah, you uh, didn't put them in the same order. Yeah, I forgive you, but. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> it, it can be swapped like, yeah, yeah, to your preference. I mean, yeah. of course, but you kind of did a similar <laughs> thing. What, why did you go for that? So, so you have different flavors, and and yeah. also because we had the same uh, the same source of our equipment. Like, um, so he advised me. Uh, well, if you want to be versatile, yeah. then it's nice to have like different colors. You saw um, me do it. Yeah, That's probably. Why. Yeah, yeah. He he went to the goat. <laughs> <laughs> So you've got stereo channels as well, which is also really nice. What do you use them on? For example, if we want to make a head, uh, headphone monitor, uh, we can do it and make it really quick. Yeah. Or we can use it for sense. You can really easily send something to the effects you've got over there. And yeah, definitely. Just have them come back. Yeah. Directly. And it's nice to see that you've got like a lot of upgrades as well. You've got the same speaker shelf, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And, yeah. uh the view meters that I've got on my mini SSL yeah yeah yeah, yeah I've got these as well at uh, the Atlantic studio just has the classic ones yeah I do have to be honest I do like the look of the original vintage yeah. view meters yeah but they can be a pain in the ass yeah so getting the mod and actually have them work properly get yeah it, it was nice. like a trade-off like it still looks nice and it's 
a little bit more efficient than the old ones and also like yeah. there the the materials to like renovate it properly weren't like, like yeah, yeah yeah all those old stuff just goes extinct yeah yeah point. and then oh. there's no need to make it anymore yeah right? so exactly so so yeah you have to go there's with just a couple of lunatics ready. that buy consoles like this and need it yeah yeah like but there's no market for it yeah yeah so well, here's one of them <laughs> yeah yeah and what else do you have like did, did you do any other mods on the console yeah, well, so we have like a dry wet control for compression, so we can add nice. like parallel compression to each channel, and you can blend it in um, just with turning uh, this knob. You nice. can turn it in, and then you have the possibility to have the <laughs> compression that you normally have on the channel, but then blend it in with the original signal. Right. So these dynamics. Yeah. So the dynamic by the dry wet. Yeah, you can you can choose uh, you, you can for example like really crush the heck out of it and yeah. then choose how much you want to add without uh, sacrificing a, another channel right for right. parallel. So that's really nice. Yeah, that's amazing. You've got a, the back bus as well, right? Mm -hmm. So you can put that on the the, the rears. Yeah, that's nice. I remember you saying there were some mods here. Yeah. So you've got a external key input, so a sidechain input for the for the center section. That's great. Yeah. For if you need to do stems and everything. Yeah, it's What's really that nice that you can have like the, the original signal to yeah. uh, react uh, uh, and then just print one stem, for example. Yeah. And you can have like the compression uh, reacting. It's great if you need to do an instrumental bounce, mm -hmm. but you still need it to respond as yeah. if it's as if, it's as if it has mix. a vocal. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's it. I wish I had that option. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can work here. <laughs> hey. Well, that's great. Okay, and then I see there's, I think, two mods over here. Yeah. I see one and two. Yeah. So basically, uh, you can use one uh, to um, generate stems yeah. without like soloing it. So it saves you a lot of time. Nice. And two, you can use to generate, uh, which the, the inventor calls floating auxes. Yeah. So you get like, eight different auxes which you can control here oh nice so you can get like multiple outputs on the stereo yeah center. yeah so, so you, you can, can like you can send like whatever channel to uh, uh to eight groups yeah and then uh you can like uh process like parallel effects digital delays nice. whatever you do that with the routing matrix, yeah so. so so you basically send it to 25 to 32 you pick it up over there nice and then you send it with with uh, with the one and then it goes t directly to uh so you could have like this setup is 25 26 yeah 27 28 29 30 and 31 32 yeah and then you can use it on every channel without sacrifice. And you just have one one, one control control for every per channel to send uh and so then you, then you use the four stereo returns yeah, we could use no, but that's not ne necessary. You can use the small faders to have it come back. Oh, uh, yeah. you just use the monitor path for yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of effects, guys. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, well, that's what uh, you can never have too much effects. There's like something fun to having like yeah. analog gear. And like I said, it's a nice to have. It's not mandatory, but sometimes it gets you like like results that you wouldn't expect right mm -hmm. like happy accidents a yeah. lot of happy accidents happen yeah. especially with analog gear because yeah something is always out of and also the the, the the hardware digital stuff like yeah an h910 who the hell is an h910 yeah that's what you do yeah but that's a really rare piece to have and you can just mess around with it and get different results yeah yeah and actually like um I mean, it's really weird to say, but it has like a certain ring to it, which which uh, separates it from like all the digital plugins. Yeah, like, it has that extra spark, that magic. Yeah. That um, if you're willing to, um, yeah, take the time and experiment with it, then you get like a different result, which right. comes maybe a little bit closer to the way music was like mixed in like the '80s, '90s, that era. Yeah. Um, which is a nice thing if you want to, like it's a, it's an option. It's right, it's great that you have it. Yeah. That you can just do everything yeah. in the uh, in outboard. Yeah, you, you can, but you don't have to. Right? right? Yeah. You can still hook up your 
yeah, you, yeah, and we also do that like like yeah. a lot of stuff we do in the box, and then for like the the extra flavor and like the signature sound, we we decide to like use some digital effects or like some right. like like some outboard gear um, to like really give it that extra two cents. Yeah, yeah, nice. So there's a couple of, I mean, I know the <coughs> Dimension D. Yeah. The H three thousand is great for like the doubler thing and yeah. some chorus stuff. I use it all the time. The plugin H nine ten is also really great harmonizer. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I think everybody kind of knows these. If you don't, sorry, let me know in the comments and I'll spend a video on it. Yeah. Oh no, I have to make a video on it. Uh, <laughs> but what's this? Is that like a, a calculator? No, it's it's actually like a digital reverb. Oh wow! Digital reverb. Oh, it's the Rev Seven. Yeah. Oh yeah! Why? Wow! Wow! Well, we also have like stuff that we didn't use as much as we should have. Like we're yeah. still like experimenting, and like you, sometimes you get like your workflow, and then you don't experiment as much. But like we're still learning over here still. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great that you have this space to just learn and, and mess around and yeah something doesn't work you just yeah yeah so for example the, something else this one which is quite known is the tc2290 yeah so the 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 power supply quit working like yeah. three weeks ago yeah shit happens that's that's what happens <laughs> so with analog gear right? yeah that's yeah sometimes it happens and we need to get it fixed but it was holiday so it, it isn't fixed yet yeah but then we still have like options so yeah, that's nice exactly yeah. you've yeah. got an ems yeah that's a delay as well right yeah that's cool i always love this calculator stuff yeah it's really nice we, we 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 sometimes we use it on bass like to get like extra oh, yeah? depth. Yeah, it's yeah, it's oh, the same. Like like it's it's a minor detail, but it like really gets you like, you know, like when 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 the, when your fingers, uh, they 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 uh, when they play bass, right? The strings when they touch it, like it gets you the extra excitement that you nice. sometimes feel when like playing analog bass, for example. Yeah. And and yeah, it's it's really hard to control. But this this was well, like one of those happy accidents. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit! We wanted to send it to like Sick. compressor probably, and then we send it to the AMS, and it was like whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's also what like real knobs give you. Yeah, like you can just mess around and. Yeah, and also you can like push it further than yeah. in the digital world. Yeah, exactly. And then you've got two URI 1176s. Yeah. Rev H. Yes, those are great. Yeah, I mean we li we use them a lot for like vocal chains. Nice. Um, yeah, what's there to say? I mean, like everybody knows this stuff. Yeah, I feel like it's the studio staples, the stuff that you, if you see it in a studio, definitely the old URI stuff. It's like mm. we know it works. Yeah, we know what we can get out of it. It's very different from. All the compressors you've got on ESSL, being VCAs, these are fat compressors, so they're super fast. Yeah. Uh, I love them on vocals, uh, snares, guitars, drums. I mean, yeah, what's yeah. more to say about them? It's great that you've got a vintage pair. I, yeah. I, I really want to hear what they sound like. Yeah. Uh, and they've got a DCL 200 yeah. Summit Audio. Yeah. What made you go for that? It's not a very common well thing. Basically, um, we got advised for if you want to have a nice stereo compressor. Yeah. Uh, slash limiter, then this one is like really close to what like a tube tech would do. Okay. Uh, um, and it's it, it actually sounds amazing. We almost always use it for like uh, vocals like for stereo uh, compression nice. um, either as a direct insert or parallel um, I mean there yeah there's just something about it I, I yeah. would like rate it like right along with the LA2A and 1176 oh, wow. and use it yeah it's it's like um, okay I need to try it yeah I've definitely. never tried it yeah I, I know mm -hmm. of it I, I didn't know of it either uh, until I bought it and uh, it wasn't really that well in in comparison, it wasn't right. really that expensive. Um, so, yeah, it was nice to have. And um, actually, it's one of the compressors that we use, like, 
almost on every mix. Sick. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. They've got the Empirical Labs threesome over there. Yeah. Two EL8Xs. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's great. That's, yeah. It's another studio staple. Yeah. You can do so much with them, but yeah. fat so. Yeah, I actually knew the, that one from the plugins at my time at Everroad Institute. The Fatso? Or yeah, the, the, the Fatso, uh, we used that as a UAD plugin. Yeah. And then when we started like uh, collecting stuff for the studio, we came along this this pair. Nice. So like it was like a uh, no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. I still want to uh, have one of those. And a transient designer underneath that. That's yeah. A transient designer. What do you What do you use? Ma mainly was for it just something that you felt you needed? Well, not really, but like this was something I got advised as well, yeah. and we tend to use it a lot on drums. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. it does something different than compression does. Yeah. So I really feel like in the analog domain, I'm I'm missing something like a transient designer. Yeah. In the workflow because. In the box, I tend to use them more often. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that's the the more logical way because yeah. you can recall it easier. But like, there's something to this transient designer that is like silk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, that, and then we can also like bounce it to like tape for tape compression that gets right. you like different drum sounds. Yeah. Oh, sick. Oh yeah, was, yeah. We'll get to to the, to the tape later. But, yeah. Uh, it's also definitely here in PCM uh, 80s. That yeah, cool. Just for if well, you need extra lexicon reverb stuff. Yeah, reverb delays. Yeah, uh, it's it's like a total effect box. Yeah, and not that expensive. So so right, it gets so you a that's lot of it's options. Also, it's also and you still get the analog circuitry, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's also nice that you bought something cheap for once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it for cheap. Yeah. Clips. <laughs> the Shelfer channel. Yeah, that's what, that was actually one of the first things I bought before yeah. there was the studio because I'm a vocalist and I wanted to have like a nice compressor and EQ. Yeah. So I had this one and also the, uh, I, I can't recall the name, but like only the compressor and we got it uh, on trial and um, it's been here ever since. So I, I use this for the vocal chain. Nice. For, um, and we used to add a lot of effects, a lot of EQ, but now basically we only use the preamp and sometimes when for effects we, we sure. add in something like compression or EQ. I really want to try this against my 1073, see how different they are, because I get the question a lot if I would recommend the Shelfer channel to people and I've never used it, so okay. I, I wouldn't know. Uh, well, I, I think it's really nice and also like it has like this, this, this these two modes. The silk is amazing. Yeah, the yeah. silk is amazing. I know the silk from the master bus processor. Yeah, so for, for example, I, I wouldn't use it on vocals as much as I used to, but like for guitars and stuff like yeah. that, I mean, yeah, yeah it, it adds something and you can, you can just dial it in, like you can use, you can choose how much amount you want to add in on right. the silk or uh, or the, the the modern one, I don't know what the blue one is called. I just called blue. Blue. Yeah. Red and blue. Yeah. And you often go through the LA two A afterward? Yeah. So basically normally when we do like a high end vocal recordings we go into the shell for it without like the EQs and and uh compression. Then we go into the LA two A and then uh from there on out to the eleven seventy six to the desk. I see you already commit to a bit of compression okay. yeah definitely because if it sounds good it probably is yeah. good and we have good monitoring so um there used to be a time we over compressed stuff like yeah, yeah. like everybody um but now i think we we we, we spent some a little bit extra time in like getting the vocal sound right uh before tracking mm -hmm. and then it saves you a lot of time while mixing because yeah. the vocals already there maybe you want to add some reverb but you don't have to do yeah a lot with it anymore like it's yeah. already there especially in combination with a nice mic yeah i mean like right. uh, stuff yeah if you can do it right from the start then yeah well um yeah that's what you want to do i, I think yeah. if you have the possibility to do it like that then yeah yeah and and be sure not to over compress stuff because you can always like you can always compress more, you can yeah. compress less. Yeah, but like it's really nice to have like the character of some of these like classic uh, right. 
pieces of gear yeah. into your mix or and your even recording. just as a tone box with a little touch of compression or maybe not even compressing no an LA2A can give you a lot of yeah, rich that's... high end with nice harmonics uh, the 1176 can give you a little bit more mid-range that pokes through the mix yeah uh, it's stuff like that it doesn't have to work really hard but no it can really it's really subtle yeah some flavor to it yeah definitely yeah i very often use like fairchild yeah even the plugin yeah just yeah, which is great like not even compressing no just give me your character. give me the sauce <laughs> give me, yeah give me what you yeah give me the extra harmonics and yeah and the added excitement and that's enough mm. i don't need to compress no 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 definitely not like sometimes it's nice like for yeah. artistic purposes but yeah definitely yeah what are those uh, uh chandlers yeah that's like a 2254 3369 style compressor so that's diode bridge so that is completely different from the rest that you have mm -hmm. so you do have a nice arsenal of different styles of compression you've got vca compressors across the board yeah and in the center section got fat compressors you've got i believe this is an opto yeah i think that's so an well. opto yeah this might be a diode bridge as well and these are diode bridge as well yeah so that that gives you a lot of character and, and this is vca of course yeah uh, and then you've got transient designer which gives you a very different thing so you've got a lot of flavors it's yeah. not like you just got a bunch of compressors that you thought were hey this is cool it's like you actually have the different styles of compression mm -hmm. the only thing you're missing is a very mule but i'll forgive you yeah um <laughs> hey you can't have it all nope uh, you can get close though like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you almost have it and then something I haven't seen for a long time is a dynamite. Yeah. Wow, why a dynamite? Yeah. Um, because it has like a certain nasty, nasty sound to it's it. It's a like, destroy box. Yeah, like if you really want to trash your drums or like... It's really, really for wanna... effect compression. Yeah, it's not, not like... It's it's definitely not subtle, but like you're not going to put this in the vocal chain. No, yeah, well, depending. Well, if you yeah, go like if, trashy, if you want to go like really yeah. punk, like it could be really nice. Yeah. Um, and that's where we use we don't use it uh, very often, but like if we really want to get dirty, then the dynamite is like an option yeah. to check out. I mean, there's a lot of vintage gear here. Yeah. Except for the Shelfer Channel, but mm -hmm. then you've got a fusion. Yeah. Yeah. Well. In, in our final stage, we can use it for like a little bit of extra compression or widen, widening effect. Mm -hmm. um, stuff you can also do in the box, but like this... Uh, oh, but it's definitely great to control. have it out of the box and, yeah. and have those... I believe there's... I don't know the box well enough, but there's like some coloring options, some mm -hmm. stereo width stuff. Yeah. Uh, you can tame the high end a little bit if it gets nasty, I believe. Yeah, it's stuff like that that can add stuff to your mix. At Atlantis, I installed the master bus processor for mm -hmm. them. Okay, nice. And that works really well. Yeah. Uh, and I can imagine like this is, well, a box like that. Yeah. A little bit less complicated and. It it it's really hands on like and uh, we can use it to get like a smiley EQ or like like get some extra excitement after we think we're finished right. and we add it in or sometimes we mix it we use it already in the mix bus to have it in the chain um, uh, yeah great and then uh, a subsequent thirty seven yeah use that a lot on basses yeah definitely. Since we use it a lot for production stuff. I actually bought this because I wanted to like uh, get the vocoder uh, sound. Yeah, nice. And uh, <laughs> me being a vocalist and uh, not having like uh, a lot of knowledge about equipment. Right. Then uh, somebody said to me, well, uh, you should go for that. And then I went to a store and uh, bought it and then never used it for that purpose. But did use it on almost every production for nice. like mono synths or like basses or yeah, it, it, it's great. Yeah, it's it's really great. Like, there's a reason why, like people like Corey Henry, for example, use this 
or like a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people who play organ or like really great keyboard players they use this as their bass component so yeah right yeah it's great and a studer yeah you went all the way analog vintage yeah this one i bought because it looked nice no. <laughs> <laughs> because it could fit yoda yeah definitely uh, yoda yoda i don't know if yoda's active right now but yoda can move oh. which is cool with the at the flying. speed of the tape uh no but like he, he can like move the faders if you want to we, oh, we can we can show that like <laughs> no but uh the, the studer um we we mostly use it now for like parallel processing so for example if we already have like a, a drum mix balance then we yeah. bounce it to the tape and nice. we, we crush it and then we add like the parallel effect in the box um so the drums get like this extra uh, weight basically yeah and also you can use it for tape effects obviously uh, flangers and stuff and yeah yeah you, you can do a lot with it um, but we have so much stuff that sometimes we forget to experiment with it yeah like, like um, but it's great that you have the spot and and the also here to experiment with everything yeah and also like uh, I, I already had to turn it off like because it, it makes a lot of noise yeah and um, it has like this cool, I, I don't know if it's connected now. From the to the so basically, it, it, it also has like the, the possibility to. Oh, very speed. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, so you can actually do some. Uh, Yeah, you can do like you can do like the Angelo back and forth. Yeah, definitely, and also like 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 for effect effect purposes, this is like really great stuff because yeah. I I don't know it just it it just gets you the thing right. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, and also like for the low end of like drums and stuff, like it's really crazy. If you like slow it down, you can get like vocal effects. Yeah, I mean Russell Elevato uses it. Yeah. Um. So why? Why, why not, not you? Yeah. <laughs> why you not? Why yeah. you not? Why do make me? Okay, so I see big ATC monitors. Yeah. They are the 100s? Yeah, they are. <laughs> these nice. are these are actually the consumer line. Yeah, they're the hi-fi finish. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there's no difference. There's no, just the finish. No, th there's just a finish and um on the on the back you don't have like the variable with the with the with the base which which you can uh, it just makes the money anyway. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're great. Yeah. I mean, before we had like uh, um, different monitors from Tenoy, yeah. which were really big and Im impressive yeah. for club sound. But when we finished mixing, it always turned out. It just out didn't translate. No. Oh, no. So after like, I think like three quarters of a year, yeah. I got fed up with that. And then. Uh, I mean, I really ATC is like you come into a studio, you see ATC, and it's like, I'm, yeah, like I'm okay. I see an SSL, I see ATCs, I see great outboard gear. Yeah, for like mixing purposes, it's really nice. Yeah, I mean, like sometimes as a producer, they would like some mm -hmm. different type of uh, sound. Yeah, but like for for mixing and recording yeah. and monitoring, like these are great. And yeah, man. Yeah. It's great. It's also great that you got the 100s and not the 150s. Yeah. I think the 100s are a little bit more punchy. Mm -hmm. 150s are a little slower. Yeah. Well, I haven't tried the 150s here, but I mean, this was like a match made in heaven. And also, yeah, we got like the consumer ones for like the, the professional pricing. So we, nice. we, we had a good deal. Yeah. And also it fits nice with all the wood in the Yeah, room. right. So, so it's nicer than just a boring ATC box. Yeah. Yeah. They can be a little bit ugly. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, it, it doesn't really matter if you're working on them, but like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want at the logo. Dive was also something. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then it, you've got classics. Yeah. LS stands and Avatons. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Basically, um, when we bought the ATCs, um, the supplier said, "Well, you won't need these anymore." Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you will do all your work on the ATCs. But uh, when we want to really check if how the mid-range translates or yeah. uh, if, 
if if you're like uh yeah compare it to like an iphone or whatever yeah the radio jack yeah uh, yeah then this real is great world jack because also for balancing right yeah like not not, not like for the detail but like for the main balancing we we tend to use it yeah. a lot yeah yeah man it's a great combo it's a classic for a reason so yeah uh, that's great and what amps are you using to power them uh well I, i've got like a old from made ford amp which was oh. like uh yeah something of my private uh Thing. and I used that for like the hour tones mm -hmm. and for the NS10s I would have to look. the Ela yeah this one uh, also I got advised nice yeah so That's I, I, I never uh, really tend to do anything about it just turn it on and right it and what's all that stuff with the big transformers in the back which which one this no in the back in the back, back. Um, to check probably. Is that for the ATC? <laughs> no, that's for the sub. Where's oh, there's a sub as well. You yeah, the ATC sub as well. No, this is a sub that the the Helios Audio they they built it themselves. Oh, because right. the ATC was very expensive. Yeah. And then he figured, well, I could build it myself. Build it. <laughs> so he built it himself, and I bought it from him with like the 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 amps. Uh, nice. With, and um, yeah, it works. It, uh, we really calibrated like subtle, so yeah. you don't have a lot of low end, but we can like add it. So we have like uh, different possibilities for monitoring with extra low end. Or have got a trim off system or something? Yeah, that yeah, we got a trim off. So we we have like several situations and several me uh, measurements that we did, like yeah. for more low end for production wise, or like a less low end for mixing purposes, or nice. um, also if you want to have like a wide angle. Right. Uh, f uh, for the precision to mix yeah. or like narrow it down to one point and um, we also um, have like a screen up and a screen down we, oh, yeah right. yeah so we, we did like a me uh, monitoring meter metering with with uh, the mic and so the you put up. a measurement mic there and then with the with screen, screen up, up and the screen down it, it reflects the high end differently yeah so yeah. so uh, so we have like these possibilities That's great um but and it's just one click of a button probably. yeah yeah we can basically just log into it and then have like i think we have like 15 presets or oh, something like nice. that but we don't really use all 15 we use maybe two or three right and sometimes you forget to use the preset yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but usually the screen is down um but it's nice when you want to have like an extra big monitor or yeah. when you do like mixing f with 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 visuals with it nice. then it's nice to work uh, like that and it's also nice that you have like a different characteristic with with the room EQ right and the train off working okay and then converter wise i've got the new aurora ends yeah the aurora lynx n um i used to have oh, like nice. old focus right red yeah but um they were a little bit more colored and I wasn't really happy with the results. Right. So then I changed it to these. And these are great. These, these are, are really good. Yeah. Those do like all the IO yeah. 32 in and out? Uh, I think more. I, I think we have uh, 40, but I'm not sure. Oh, I've nice. At least, at least 32. And yeah. I think more because we have like 39, yeah. Probably 40. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got the entire desk on there. Yeah. It's nice because they're nice and punchy. Yeah. So it really gives yeah, an extra it was a, weight to it. Yeah, it was a world of difference with, yeah. with the older Focus, right? Which was like early 2000s and these yeah. tend to translate much more neutral and still uh, more punchy. So for, yeah. for the results that we're getting with it, it was really an upgrade. Uh, nice. Yeah. And then you've got the Prism as well. Yeah. So... Um, there's always a better conversion and, and for high end purposes or like if you want to really maintain like the vocal balance that we hear on the desk yeah then also with like the the links sometimes we we uh, lose a little bit of definition yeah so for that purpose we have like the prism um, for like the stereo and conversion right. um, to go to the really really precise yeah I mean like most listeners wouldn't really notice mm -hmm. what we notice well for you but that's the thing with great gear i guess it's yeah like, it's not for the end listener it's not like the end listener would 
hear that it's Prism no, or but, Lynx is that you... No, but they hear, hear like the total package, right? Like the sum of all minor details became... Yeah, well, I don't, like I don't a, even think that's it. I think it's more like you make certain decisions yeah. in a quicker way and in a better way because of the gear you're using. And yeah. that's why your process is getting to a better result. And yeah. because all the source stuff is better and your monitoring is better you hear more so yeah. you can make a more calibrated decision yeah definitely. which results in a better end result mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's definitely true because also when we're referencing like and we reference uh via the prism or via the lynxes you hear difference right? yeah so depending on the genre it's nice to hear where the differences are so you can take that with you when you're mixing right. um yeah so the prisms are really nice um, for like high-end conversion yeah. and they give you a little bit more detail, especially in the reverbs, like like the depth nice. of the mix. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And that all is connected to Dante? Yeah, we run it with Dante Virtual Soundcard um, because, well, it was the most convenient way uh, to like hook all this up and yeah. get a quick workflow with it. Um, nice. It, it does, you, you do need to have some time reserved for like installing all the drivers when you get yeah. to work here so mainly we advise to work from the studio computer if you want to do it quick but if you're gonna come back then it's nice to have all the drivers yeah, ready exactly and also um yeah it works it works quicker that way yeah, yeah. and we have like unlimited um uh, routing possibilities with the Dante right so that's that's really nice you to have love because there's Dante going upstairs as well yeah yeah 24 nice. channels so I think um let's follow the Dante uh, lines and uh, yeah head upstairs yeah that's cool nice yeah I didn't see this yet but here you've got a sort of uh, machine room as well. yeah yeah so here we have like the the power uh, coming in mm -hmm. uh, and we have like several groups nice so we can separate uh, each group uh, so the SSL the 19 inch racks the monitoring the tape this is the tech room and this uh, these are like the sockets the wall sockets oh right yeah. and we also have like the digital delay box the looks like going 480 l nice yeah and um, and we have like the BX20 over there yeah that's great yeah so uh, yeah uh, that's a really nice uh, reverb and you've got that there because otherwise it would react to yeah the I know and coming from the monitor yeah I, ri I originally wanted it in like the room because yeah. of vibe yeah but it, I got advised to put it here because uh, yeah it's just the one and these are to patch this stuff yeah and also you have like some extra lines so if you wanna uh, record vocals you can just plug it in here and then you can yeah, record here or you can have like uh yeah you have an amp yeah you can have an amp set up here and then just connect it by uh, the nice it's smart yeah and then here are all your mics well uh, seeing a couple yeah. of cool uh stickers with nice yeah numbers on it yeah so um we got some like really cool vintage or a nearly vintage mic so this is the oh, this is, is a vintage 67 yeah you can check it out oh it's a cool case It's heavy, man, this case. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> this is all the story. <laughs> so, here. This is it. Oh, nice. And Proper it's vintage. It's from Studio. Uh, I need a. Hundfunk? Yeah. German. <laughs> Yeah. German, uh, yeah, Rundfunk. Yeah, it's it's like a comedy, right? Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> now I don't know what the uh, yeah the, the where it's from. No. But it has history. It's probably vintage. Yeah, yeah. It, it I think it's from yeah the early seventies probably. That's nice that you've got like if a C eight hundred doesn't work. Yeah. You need something totally different. Yeah, if you want to like... And you probably really want this. Yeah, because it's really warm. You, you lose a lot of detail in the highs. Yeah. But like the body is something that you cannot really compare to any other mic. I, I've got it. Right. In the repertoire. And I see two, two... You've got two C12s? Yeah. Oh, okay. But not the... This is the VR C12. Yeah. Um, 
it's a really it's a little bit lighter yeah yeah it's it's more modern right like, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have because all, it, all the, all the years of dust on it yeah nice yeah so this one is actually green you cannot see it here yeah right but um i think this is early like early 2000s yeah well, 90? i think like maybe more like i'm and 90s i don't really know for sure it's cool I can check the paper okay two they used to have it at CE. yeah and one stopped working and they made a a, a light out of it a yeah recording light yeah well wow oh, that's an expensive light <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, it stops working. Yeah, they've got two of these. Yeah, are they stereo matched? Uh, no, uh, but we tend to use it for like stereo effects for drums, um, but they're not stereo matched. You don't need to have mic stereo match. Well, I think. think if the character is right and your game staging is correct, then you'll get really yeah. close. Yeah. yeah, and if they're slightly different, your stereo is going to be wider. Yeah, so it's not really. I think stereo matched is really for classic stuff yeah also like sometimes yeah. it's available sometimes no is this a mic yeah that's uh i don't know this is the eight this is the akai uh, drum computer i was talking about like the you want to see yeah, yeah. this is the gold well, well everything has gold oh wow yeah so this is the mpc live uh, 2 sick yeah which is cool for sampling producing and also for the looks. Here we have some other stuff like these four these fours. Yes, four oh, fours. Oh nice, old ones. Yeah, vintage. Love it. Of oh, course, my first mic, Rode N1. Oh yeah. <laughs> these are great. Yeah. The BULS still had a transformer at this point. Yeah. So that's. Uh, I often advise. These, mm -hmm. they're not that cheap anymore, but like five years ago, when yeah. people asked me which one, what mic should I get for uh, 800 bucks, I would also always say this. They're yeah. now 12, 13, I think. Yeah. But they were great. Yeah, these are. Oh, you've got a 58? Of course. Everybody needs a 58 what? in their life. And I don't know this one. Oh, yeah, this one. I bought this one for performance. <laughs> Course. Because it's chrome. Oh, it's the telephone cut. Yeah. The M80. Yeah. Oh, I've got this as well. Not in chrome, but no. I've got it in. Uh, but it's really nice, nice actually, on, on snares. Yeah. Like the right? guitar. Yeah, it's more yeah. pronounced high end. Yeah. And I also always feel like either this works or an SM58 works yeah. on vocals. If, yeah. If this works, yeah, then, then the SM58 doesn't work. No, and, and, and the, the other SM58 way around, right? Doesn't, yeah. Yeah, this is a PL20, I think. No, RE20. RE20, also a great mic to have. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this was the. Snares is cool, guitar caps is cool. Yeah. Kids. But also like vocals. Vocals, yeah. Yeah. It, instead of an SM7B, yeah. like everybody does. Yeah, this I is used way nicer. I did I, uh, I this before the SM7B. Okay. The SM7B is here right there. there. Yeah. 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 Everybody knows that one. So and these sure. are really nice. <coughs> so I got a match pair of these, like the oh, Royals. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. And these, these are great. great. Yeah. Really nice on guitars as well. That's in combination nice. with the SM57. Yeah. Do you ever use them on overheads for drums? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, if you want to have like the vintage sound, and also these can uh, handle like a pretty good SPL. Yeah, right. Yeah, because normally with these type of mics, then it's a it's a risk, but these can handle like a good uh, pressure level. Yeah, and then one eighty fours. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I I usually use that on overheads. Nice. Yeah. A little bit more detailed. Yeah, I think like you you can go like either either way, right? And these capture a little less low uh, high end, so yeah. Nice shit. Yeah. I've got a and, and also like got a decent mic locker. I think it's cool, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, wow. uh, it's the start of the source, right? So exactly. Oh, I like the vibe here. Yeah. It's nice. 
It's a lounge area. Yeah, so here we have like lounge area. Can you rehearse here as well? With the yeah, so um, we can do like band rehearsal stuff here. Nice. But also all the, all the rooms are interconnected, so if you want to check what, whatever you're doing in several rooms, then you can just send it through one connection and then you can listen to it here on the PA. Nice. Or you can listen to different monitors. And this could also be the live room for <coughs> that control room. Yeah, it, it, it could be used uh, as a live room or uh, if you, uh, yeah. for example, if your drums are recorded over there and you want yeah. to have like guitars here, then that's really nice as well. We, we got everything uh, interconnected also. So we have like a stage box over there. So this road is somewhere between a Mark One and a Mark Two. Yeah. So it still has the wooden elements in it, and also it it has like a tube amp built in it. Sick. So it has like a more warm feel to it. Well, and we we use it a lot on like basically every production. Yeah. It's great it's to have a, a, yeah. roads in the studio, it just and especially having it hooked up to the amp and just ready to go. And yeah. You can start vibing and playing and everything. Yeah, That's it's, so it's really important. nice for composing yeah. and just getting into a vibe. Just, yeah, exactly. Just getting the vibe. and That's why I put the Mark I in the Atlanta studio in the control room yeah. with the bass man next to it. Yeah, I was uh, also advised to do that as well. And I, I'm probably going to do that. Yeah. But for now, uh, it, it was nice here. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's great. And this, what's this mod? Uh, this is actually for the for the for the for the for the power. I thought yeah. this was like a, a headphone. No, no, this is this is for the for the tube amp. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. So you turn it on with the volume knob, and then it automatically picks up. Stuff with this. So this is like an artwork that I made for my own uh, music. Um, uh, I used to be in a in a paint business, so it, it has some some elements of painting in it uh, and also some elements of music and that combined became like the artwork for my, uh, my debut. It's a transition and then, from one career to another. Yeah, from the paint into the music and uh, then uh, we built this for the artwork which was really big. Right. And then after the artwork was done I didn't have a place to put it so it was like an empty hall for a long time. And then uh, when we started building this place um, I figured well maybe it could fit here. And then actually it, it just fitted through the yeah, through, yeah, yeah. through the gang. <laughs> and uh, well now it's here and I think it's really nice because it yeah it just immediately gives the room a vibe and also acts for like some sort of diffusion. Yeah, actually, yeah. If you wanna see it like that, but like it has like stuff like my first beat headphones and uh, like a turntable and the cold speakers, like a disc man mini disc, like all, all, all the all the stuff I grew up with tape recorder, player, and also like stuff from the paint history that uh, yeah. defines me. Nice, man. Yeah. It's really great. It's great to have a piece of yourself there and of the history. And yeah, I, I think like it adds to the room. Yeah, and, uh, definitely. Yeah. It's definitely a piece that you walk in and you kind of see it, and then you walk up and you're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, oh, yeah. That's cool. And then we've got uh, another production setup. Yeah. Playground. Yeah, so, stuff. so this room is interconnected with downstairs. Yeah. So we have 24 lines going down. Um, That's an entire patch, right? Yeah. And um, it's also connected with the room here. Nice. And when you, for example, want to record drums, you can either use uh, the Apollos here to process it directly, nice. or you can run it through the desk and then uh, use it there so it's hardwired. So the first 24 channels of the SSL also have like 24 from here coming in. But you can also send it upstairs for effect processing. Um, and actually at this moment I've rented this space for a couple of days in the week to somebody who really loves drum computers. Yeah. So we have like a bigger setup now with some yeah, really nice drum uh, computers and effects processing. Um, but yeah, basically if you're a multi-instrumentalist you could just go. That's great. Yeah. It's great that you've got like the drum kit over here on its own little podium. Yeah. You've got two stacks of synths. Great Oberheim over here. Yeah. Yeah, this is really That's nice. It's like a vintage piece, man. Yeah, yeah. Prince used to you yeah, used nice. to work with this on I think the nineteen ninety nine album. 
I love how you know about the gear yeah. that you got, like who used it, on what, and why is it here? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, um, you, as I said, I, I was like a total noob into gear, but I got really yeah. addicted, and then you dive into the history, and then you find, like, pieces of gear online, uh, and then add it to your collection, yeah. so you can use it as a, as a tastemaker, basically. Right, yeah. and that's a 303... Yeah, this not an original, but a no cyclone. Yeah, so this one, uh, I think he uses this one for, uh, yeah, a lot of bass programming with MIDI, and it, I mean, like, it has these effects on it. I can't really explain it because I'm not really, like, a drum computer type of guy. But right. it, when he works with it, it's like magic, and we have like a setup from our previous hi-fi, so we have like. I have five speakers and production speakers here from Wilson Audio, which are nice, and the production speakers are actually from the producer who works here. Monkey Bananas. Yeah, I mean, he, he loves them and he has the sub so he can like oh, yeah. really yeah. Uh, use the low end. Uh, for mixing, I would advise maybe use other speakers, but like for producing, it works very good in this room. Don't change a winning team. No, no. If that's what gets you going, yeah, do it. Yeah, so this nice. room is like, yeah, mostly isolated and uh, it, it, it has like uh, everywhere diffusion and absorption so it's uh, nice the the like if it was all these slats yeah then it would have been very cramped yeah but now it's vibey on the sides you've got the leds going across and then this is just white so yeah. it just doesn't feel that no it doesn't well. because there are the, the 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 space is quite small right but, yeah. but because of the light works it feels pretty big so uh, did you do that yourself? Did you hire a company that specialized um, in stuff like that? Or? Well, in my previous life, we used to have like a furniture maker. Yeah. And uh, well, we came up with the ideas and got some advice on how to isolate it. And they uh, actually prefabbed like all the plates and then put it together here. Nice. Um, so it was like a, a teamwork uh, effort. Yeah. Because I believe it's the same stuff here that you've got downstairs, but this yeah. is basically a system that allows you to take off. Yeah, but this one is not that easy as the one uh, downstairs. Yeah, yeah. So you can actually move. Th th these are all fabrics. So behind there, there's an MLS sequence right. with wood and uh, rock wool behind it. So you have like different reflections and here. You stop using the, w the wood, so you don't have the flare, ref uh, the snare reflections. Then it goes further that way. So all around the room, because it's quite small. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's not dead, and it's not really lively either. So you right. can use this room. It's nice for and life. balanced. Yeah. You can use it for pretty much everything. And if you mess this up, if somebody gets murdered here and yeah, there's yeah, blood yeah. all over it, you can. Yeah, just that, that th sometimes that tends to happen, and then. Uh, <laughs> We can yeah, remove can all evidence. Change yeah. it out and yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you if you want to have another color or whatever, or like here you can't really see it, but you can also print it. So, like basically, yeah, uh, yeah. And it's acoustically, it's completely transparent. Yeah, it's 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 transparent, so you don't really hear it. Uh, you hear the reflections from the fabric behind it. Yeah, yeah. Sick. And then you've got you got to move one. Yeah, man. Yeah, these things are legendary. Yeah, this is actually not mine, but it's here for now. <laughs> Sick though. I think I'm gonna miss it when it's not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first time someone brought a Moog One to the studio, I was like, holy shit. What yeah, is this? I mean, it was like brand new. These go, these are like 10k or something. I think uh, maybe like eight, right? I don't really. Yeah, something somewhere between eight and ten. They're not cheap. No, they're they're pretty like, expensive, but. Yeah. Uh, well, this piece is actually from the guy who rents this place. Nice. Yeah. And he, he, he must trust you. Yeah, well, uh, well I mean, I trust him, him as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and we know, we've known each other from, from Abbey Road Institute as well. Right. So we go way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. nice to have like people who can create here, right? Because like a room is just a room until like somebody puts energy in it. Yeah. And I mean, combined, uh, making music is so much more fun than just doing it all on your own, right? Right. Yeah. That's sick. Some 707, 101. Yeah, that one is actually vintage. What's this? I mean, I have to ask him, but it's like a modular uh, synthesizer 
which he uses to process effects and uh, he runs uh, uh, like certain signals through it and then I can't really explain you how he uses it but it gets you like really it's cool a crazy effects. modular uh, synth yeah I, I can like uh, ask yeah. him to react in the comments what's it called group it's a GRP synthesizer and I think it, this one gets made in Italy yeah. like uh, and you have to order it like uh, on a, yeah, a customer basis Sick. so Sick. it gets uh, manufactured on order okay so if you're seeing this owner yeah. of this weird machine tell us what it is if you know if you're somebody yeah. else that knows what this is let us know down in the comments what it actually is so yeah. next time we can act like we actually know what it is <laughs> do the 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 plants are yeah. they fake or do they actually survive here no they're fake um but I it adds to so. the space of the room yeah. I'm but really they're really good fakes yeah i mean um we took care in a lot of details here and also like if you if you want to have like a vibrant yeah um, vibe then plants are nice um also for the oxygen sometimes but it's not possible for no. you to survive i had i had like a sick huge bonsai yeah in the studio and it just wow. survived for a week oh wow that's a pity that was an expensive week yeah yeah, yeah man it's it's was, it was your personal bonsai right? yeah okay yeah. i put it in the studio and i was like uh-uh yeah. not doing this anymore yeah so um yeah man it, i mean nature is always good vibes right right so that's plants that's why i need a studio that just has like a glass wall yeah and looking at nature out, yeah would be nice, right? Right. <laughs> In the so that's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm trying to go for. I don't know about you, but I don't. I know nothing about guitars. No, I don't. So either. I could just go like, oh, this is a Fender Jazz bass. Bass. Oh, I was right. Yeah, it's a Fender Jazz bass. Yeah, it, it is. This is a Stratocaster. Yeah. Oh, this is a acoustic bass. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So. Basically, we have a lot of like different equipment. <laughs> basically. 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 <laughs> so we have a lot of stuff here which musicians can use. And I don't pretend to be an expert in all these things, but the musicians that come here and who help me build this place, um, they do. And I think we have like a lot of taste makers to get yeah. you where you want to go. Right. So it, it's totally up to you. That's so you cool that, that you just yeah bring I, everyone and everyone. To, yeah, it's like a team effort. I'm, I'm not. I'm definitely not the only one who's driving this this thing. But um, I think um, I make it work for the team. Yeah, well, yeah. And that's like, if you have to do this on your own, it's yeah. Well, it's it, not. It, it, it's not funny. You know? No, and it, it would be a waste of time actually, because you, because a place like this deserves energy of more than one person. Yeah. To right. create something which you cannot really do on your own, yeah, or you can try to, and some people can. I mean, yeah, but uh, sometimes it helps to have like other people around, and that's what a place like this is for, I think. Exactly. So, to stimulate the the creativity and to make like good music. Yeah, yeah. man, definitely. That's the goal. Nice. I think that was the it's entire studio, unless you've got one more. No, I got the office. Floor to go and. Uh, no, maybe in the future. Buying right? all the space next door yeah it's well, actually expanding yeah it could be like uh but for now uh it's more profitable to rent it as is yeah yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. music studios are hard to maintain man. i mean right yeah it's a nice dream and it's really cool it's really cool but it's really it's a hard it's a tough business yeah it's yeah. It, basically this would be more profitable if i would rent it for uh i don't know meetings yeah. i don't sad but it's true yeah yeah so um I think like musicians deserve better, like they deserve a better stable form of income and yep. then they could reinvest it in a place like this exactly. to get to where they want to go. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. So that's the dream. Or there has to be some kind of magic business model that yeah. allows yeah, a place to like make your this. money somewhere else yeah. so musicians can come in. Yeah. So that's basically what I'm doing now here. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, it would be really nice to um, to see it grow for what it is built for, and uh, to harvest like all the the time and uh, energy that came into building a place like right. this. So um, 
So it can translate to something that the world needs, which is good music. I think exactly. we, always, we always need good music, right? We need good music. Yeah. Nice. That's a great one to sign off with. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, My pleasure. Definitely, man. It's a great spot. All right. And I hope I uh, can come back sometime. Definitely. You're more than welcome. Nice. All right. Amazing. Thanks. That was the studio tour. Uh, Juno didn't really want to be second camera person, so sorry, Paul. You had to do everything by yourself. I know. I appreciate you. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. Uh, comment down below what your favorite piece was of this entire studio. If you want to support the channel, underneath this video, you'll see all my affiliate links for Toman. And you can buy something there. It wouldn't cost you anything extra. It just gives me a little bit of a kickback so I can feed Juno. Which is really important because otherwise he just lays on the couch and doesn't want to be cameraman camera dog for you so win-win you know that's it for me today um i'll see you on another video later <laughs>